I'm here in a runway in Croatia with, with Matti Rimac. He's going to talk me through the car. Amazing looking car. Tell me about it, the design, features of it, the performance. I mean, there's so much to learn. First, it's not the C2 anymore. It's the Nevera. That's the production name. It's a Croatian car. We are very proud to have developed and produced it in Croatia. So we wanted a Croatian name and Nevera means basically a strong and sudden storm off the Mediterranean coast with lightning and everything. And we thought it reflects the nature of the car very well, like electrified and strong and, and sudden. So you didn't name it after a Nissan? pickup no not the Navara it's <laughs> okay. the Nevera okay, right. Nevera. okay. Nevera. I'll make it's sure a, I get that right it's a real creation word so we have developed this car for four years and the point of us doing cars in the first place was to show what electric cars can do I started the company by converting an e30 1984 that's it, an e30 that's right yeah. <laughs> yeah, into an electric car yeah Nikola Tesla was born in Croatia just like two hours from here I was inspired by that and decided to make an electric car so this one is the most powerful production car and fastest accelerating production car ever. Important thing to say about it, it's, it's not like a garage project. So absolutely everything is developed specifically for this car. So a, a completely new platform, monocoque, powertrain, motors, inverters, gearboxes, battery pack, battery management system, all the ECUs, infotainment buttons. There's nothing from another car in this car. It's a completely bespoke. Completely bespoke. We built 18 prototypes so far. So it's not like, you know, doing the whole development of one or two prototypes. We are doing proper global homologation, airbags, 1,900 horsepower. We said it will have like 9.1 seconds to the quarter mile and we already now achieved 8.6. So we set the bar high, but overachieved it. But it's not just about performance. So it has the biggest battery pack of any car right now on the market, 120 kilowatt hours and 1.4 megawatts out of the battery. It's also full of features, like it has 13 cameras, it has autonomous driving capability, six radars, very nice interior with lots of space, easy to get in and out. It has a decent boot, a decent trunk. Has it got a frunk? No here in the rear okay. because this is all cooling in the front and everything in this car has a purpose which brings me to something Matt we are very big fans of yours so uh, we, uh, we can't no look way. at you <laughs> we can't look at you with all of these sticks you know <laughs> to use so this is your now official oh stick of truth oh my god I've got a Grimac <laughs> stick of truth and it's multifunctional uh, press on the button underneath wait a minute it vibrates yeah why does it vibrate you will figure it out I mean, it's got two speeds. No, 10 modes. 10 modes? Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Is there anywhere that I can poke your, your sexy car? Yeah, look, it's all genuine. Look at this. Yeah, all everything the is, Look at this. Everything is real. Look. Yeah. Okay. So, Let's put it on the side. You, you'll have fun with it later. <laughs> I, I want to keep it. It will wait for you here, Matt. It's, well, it's a present well, from my girlfriend. <laughs> She'll be very happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> present from Croatia. The design is driven by performance. We don't want to make cars flashy. We don't want to make them very trendy with lots of, you know, glitter and stuff. We want to make it timeless. For example, here in the front, people think electric cars don't need cooling. They need less of it and different kind of cooling. We have a big radiator here in the front for the battery pack. And also, if it's too hot outside, combustion engine cars have lots of power that you have to dissipate in terms of inefficiency and heat that gets generated. With electric cars, it's a lot less kilowatts, but the maximum temperature is much lower. So a combustion engine car can be 130, 150 degrees. Celsius, a battery, for example, 60, 70. So if it's too hot outside, you don't have enough delta temperature between the outside air and the maximum temperature of the battery. So then you need a big radiator to get that heat out. And if it's too hot, it actually closes this flap, it's active aerodynamics. And then you shut it off and use the air conditioning compressor to cool the battery. Did you try in extreme cold temperatures as well? Yeah, we did that in climatic chambers. We are starting with the production of the car in a few months. So we are still doing the final testing, but we did a lot of testing already. Yeah, so there's still some testing to do. Because that's the big thing, isn't it? Like a lot of people talk about with electric cars is how your range is affected when it's cold. We don't think so much about when it's hot. Yeah. Well, in the UK we don't, um, because it's never that hot. But that's the easy thing. For us, the difficult one was we wanted to have continuous power so that there is not like, you know, you do the two races and that's it. Yeah, like in a Tesla, you can feel like once you're down 75% of the battery, you start to notice the drop off in acceleration. That doesn't affect this car. The goal was from the beginning, two laps on a Nürburgring without thermal derating. And you can do like, I don't know, 20 launches here. It won't degrade. At some point it will, when you either hit thermal limit or the battery state of charge limit. When is that? So you have, a, you have a power indicator of how much power is available. It tells you like available 1,400 kilowatts. And that starts to drop somewhere around 35% state of charge. Not so it's not like a Tesla, like 30, you can go down to 35% and you can still have like maximum yeah. performance. Okay. The battery is not like a skateboard in the floor. We made that decision consciously because we wanted to have a very uh, low seat to make it a hypercar design and also to make it aerodynamic, of course. And what you can see here, we were really trying very hard to make it usable and comfortable. So it has a big 
big cutout for the roof to get in and out mm -hmm. easily. When you sit in the seat, our goal was always to be able to put the foot down on the floor without putting your bum on the sill. <laughs> so, should be able to do it without touching. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you don't have to climb onto the sill first and then on no, the you car. Can just get in and out like that. Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. yeah, you can. Exactly. Big, big door. And that's a challenge for the structure because when you do crash testing, you don't have a load pad here. With the battery being a structural element and the battery modules and cells being structural, this is the stiffest structure of any car ever made with 70,000 Newton meters per degree. Engineers, they'll understand what that means. But basically, it's the stiffest car. It's very car. stiff. Yeah. You say that while holding that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it does seem quite roomy, doesn't it? Yeah, that was the, the goal, to have it roomy and uh, with lots of features. So uh, infotainment, connectivity, trunk space, electrical adjustable seats, electrically adjustable steering columns. So it's not like a one-trick pony just for driving fast on a straight line. Is there a motor on each wheel or is it two on an axle? It's two on an axle. So the motors are between the axles and then you have two gearboxes between the motors and the drive shafts going out of the motors. And we are controlling each one independently. Basically, a motor controls a wheel. Yes. And so you can do what you want with each wheel. So you don't, it's not like using the ESP or anything like that or an e-diff it's just yeah. you tell each wheel how much torque to deliver everything changes with when you change the modes and that's why we have this big knobs in there so you are changing big stuff in the car so we wanted you to feel like big click when you do that so it's not hidden away in some menu it's these so here with this oh one, yeah i can see it yeah you change the mode here front wheel drive only so take who wants that <laughs> so rear power you can have front power now at 100 so now you have a very fast golf yeah that's <laughs> for when your mum's driving it yeah. We are just scratching the surface with what you can do with this. You can endlessly tweak this system and especially with so many cameras and all of that upgrade capability, the customers can get all of these new features all the time. Right. So you talked at the very beginning about the, the performance, the power, 1900 horsepower. Will all there be a thing in future like Tesla did where you can increase the power of the car? Have you done it at 19 because you know maybe we want to be able to make it do 2000? We have potential to have much more performance, yes. Right, I get it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, and we are like now at 95% performance of the car, of what we wanted to achieve for, for production, and we can go beyond that and, and improve it further. But we want to have something that really works and what's reliable, and then we can you know push the edge. I suppose a good thing, if you're a buyer of one of these cars, you're not gonna have another version that's more powerful come out. If you increase the power, you'll be able to make your car that car. Is exactly, that with okay. software. With software, cool. Yeah. Well. Then I guess you should have a go. I should definitely have a go. I should definitely have a go. Okay, so you're probably wondering, Matt, where's the bit where you drive the Rimac? Well, if you want to see me drive the Rimac, you're going to have to click on that window there because I've done a drag race with a Nevera against a Ferrari SF90 for car wow. It's an amazing race, my favourite one yet. If you'd rather watch a track battle with the Yaris GR, then you can watch that up there. And as ever, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. I'm going to be doing loads more content on this channel and you don't want to miss out. See you soon.